So this morning, Jackie Medill from the uh, Washington Beef Commission is back helping us prepare the perfect holiday meal. The last hour, we were uh, being uh, regaled with uh, the fine points of making the perfect holiday roast. And now uh, we get to find out how to present the entire meal. Through the because, magic of television. Yes, because presentation is <laughs> everything, right? I mean, if, I mean if, if you can't, you know, actually deliver the goods, at least look good doing it. Right. Fake it till you make it. I don't know. Man. <laughs> I mean, that's always been my key. But uh, then again, you can actually cook. So that's the difference. I think it's funny because in every, um, like, holiday show or movie or whatever, like, mom seems to do all the work in the kitchen. And then, like, the roast and the knife are handed to dad. And he is, has that, the glory. That is correct. That actually moment. has happened uh, in our house. <laughs> household and I was handed the knife and I could not have made more of a mockery of that roast in trying to cut it. So Isn't that funny? Okay. So, so here we go. So now we're actually getting going. We're getting ready for dinner. So if you remember, we talked to our, um, we talked to our butcher to make our lives a little bit easier and they went, so I, I roasted this off last night, which is why it looks a little cold because it is cold. Well, there you go. Um, just so that I can because it's not actually the magic of television and I can't actually bring in a nice warm roast to you guys. Um, so you can see this is what the ribs look like when you peel them off. It's, it, right. You literally just cut the strings. You're going to set those off to the side. Okay. Now this is literally just like if you can cut steak on your plate and eat it, <laughs> you can cut a roast <laughs> once the ribs you are think, off. You would think, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and I do, I mean, you know, you always see like the perfect like fork and, and the, the big meat fork and the like slicing knife. I actually think a serrated bread knife is always your the sharpest knife in your kitchen. It seems to be. And it's the easiest to work with. And so once you get those ribs off, you literally, now there's kind of a crust, right? Because we put all this nice right, rub on here. Yep. So you're going to have to kind of get through the crust as you make slices. And um, obviously you would want to take out your meat thermometer and that sort of thing. But See how it just slices very easily and very smoothly once you get all this extra off. Um, okay. Now, when this is hot out of the oven, this can be a little bit hard on the fingers. So do be careful. You don't want to burn yourself. And all of this um, wonderful fattiness, right? This is all going to be juicy and super moist when it's right out of the oven. So you're going to want to have a cutting board underneath of you and maybe some paper towels nearby because a lot of the juices, even after resting, can really kind of pool and, and make a little bit of that mess that we were talking about. Right. But then you would take this, you know, this beautiful slice and look at that. That's about a half an inch thick, right? This is a huge serving, but remember we said Christmas calories don't count. Um, <laughs> Thank goodness So that, right? you would take this beautiful <laughs> you know, this beautiful slice, and that's not too much. You can really, really enjoy that. And you would plate it up on on a lovely plate. Look at or this serve family style. You can always serve family style. I think some of these um, more unique, instead of a typical platter, some of these more unique serving boards, these are almost like cheese boards. Look at how lovely this looks. You've got beautiful kind of Northwesty colors. Yeah. Um, everything seems just very welcoming and homey. Okay. Two questions. Um, being the, the beef expert, if, if we're doing roast beef, what would you uh, suggest as a pairing? I mean, what would be the perfect pairing? So I guess I'm a little old school, <laughs> but I do generally go with a bigger, bolder red. That's also what my family prefers. Okay. Um, I have one sister-in-law that drinks really s sweeter wines, and I always have a bottle of that for her, too, so okay. she's happy. Um, I love if you're, if you're going with this brown sugar bourbon and coffee rub that we put on our roast. Right. I mean, why not? serve it up with a little bit of brown sugar bourbon on this. Yeah. And, you know, can sip there on that go. instead. And and we're obviously not going to eat all of this. If we're, we're going <laughs> to have leftovers, what would you suggest in terms of preparing this for the day after or whatever? Yes, absolutely. So you would probably slice up your entire roast and then anything that is leftover should just be packaged up in um, a food safe container. So whether that's one of those nice Ziploc plastics or even uh, a, a plastic bag, um, get that into the refrigerator. You don't want to leave any of your food sitting out on the table for hours and right. hours on end. Um, so you want to get it back into the refrigerator and cooled back down as quickly as possible. And then, you know, you've got beautiful slices like this. Um, if you have one of those handy dandy slicers in your kitchen, you can make your own like deli roast beef. Um, or you can just kind of thinly slice it as best as you can yourself. This makes the most amazing French dip sandwich you've ever had in your life. It looks like the <laughs> most amazing thing. Jackie Medill, always a pleasure to have you. Thank More you. information at uh, visit wabeef.org. Yep. Wabeef.org. There you go. Alex, back to you.